What's up guys, Charles from Halt's Boots here and today we're doing a full on foot review of the new Adidas X Crazy Fast Point One LL and they don't have any laces but that's not really a problem. Alright, so we're doing a review today on the Crazy Fast Point One LL and it is no longer a plus model, it is a point one. So it's still top end, but now our laceless boots have been demoted to a point one model, which I don't think is a big deal. Adidas has now decided to gone with, has decided to go with rather, um, a three top model tier system for their X boots, which I guess, to each their own. I got my size nine in these, and I know people like to go down half a size in laceless boots. Typically, I don't. With the Copa Pure, I wore the same size in the Plus and the Point One. Had no issues there in terms of sizing. Now, every boot fits different. Well, I should say every silo fits different. So, I did wear nine in the launch colorway of the Crazy Fast, and we're gonna see how this nine fits in the LL version. I don't see why it would make a difference, but, I'm just always, it's always a thing for me, if I go down half a size, my feet just fit fine, but the width is just not there. And I was hooked up with these by Soccer USA OKC. I've been friends with them for a few years now, just talking boots and whatnot. I did pay for these, so they didn't send them out for free, but I was able to get this new pearlized pack, I wanna say three weeks ago, before they released. I just haven't had time to get to this boot yet. So huge shout out to them, check them out. They always have some crazy rare models, they have, you know, they're a soccer chain, so they have regular boots as well. Sometimes they get stuff in early and release it early, so big ups to them. I've really have, I've actually gotten, I wanna say five or six pairs from them now in the last couple of years, and I think three of the pairs I've done a review on might have been from them as well. So huge ups to them, love them for that. But going forward with this review here, it's the exact same thing as the point one. Like, I don't understand why you would buy the laceless, or why you would buy the laced version over the laceless version, other than I guess maybe lockdown, but, it's the same exact boot. Like, let me move, let me get this other one here, move the box out of the way, and then we're gonna pop this up. And look at this, it's the same exact thing. The colorways are different. I don't have the, the lace version in this because I, I wore the launch colorway, but, but it's the same exact boot. They just punched holes in it. So I don't know what the price is exactly on these. I can't remember what I paid, but I wanna say they're 275 or 260. And we saw 275 has been the sale point for all plus models for the X's. Now I wanna say these are 250, so I'm assuming these are 275, and then I believe it's 300 for the plus model now. So again, I'll put all the correct prices right here, just so you can kind of actually see, so I'm not just going off the top of my head, but there's nothing different about these boots other than there's no laces. Like, at least with our laceless models in the past, like the Speed Portal, the Speed Flow, even the Ghosted, we had this like extra material here, and I don't have plus models of those in the collection right now, or they're not out. So I can't grab those and compare them, but it's literally the exact same thing. We've lost that extra, like they would do like sparkly, like grippy material in here, and that would really hold your foot in, but we don't even have that anymore. So I don't know why they're doing this to us. It really feels like they're really just being greedy, in my opinion. And honestly, I think I might actually end up putting holes in these because I want to test that out. I have a couple friends who've already done it, so huge, huge ups to them for giving me the idea, but I think I'm gonna do that at some point, but I'll do that in another video. We gotta get the rest of this review done. So just taking a look here, if you've seen this review before, it's of, of the point one, it's gonna be almost the exact same in this portion. And it has the same kind of like extra reinforced area in the toe here. It's just white on white, so it's very, very hard to see, but I promise you it's there. Everything feels the same. We have that arrow cage as well. You can kind of see like it's like a little see-through back in there. That's the arrow cage and we have the air opacity plus upper. I can't remember the whole name, but I think that's it. So again, I don't know how to feel about these. I'm worried they won't fit me right. I, I don't remember if I said or not, but I tried them on once a few weeks ago in a different colorway, and I felt like there's extra room in the toe. I didn't have grip socks, so I'm not entirely sure what that will entail, but I just don't know. I'm a little worried that they, um, they're not gonna fit my feet right because I had issues with these as well, but an 8.5 is just too narrow and just murders my feet. And this material is just not easy to stretch out. And I just don't have the time to, to really, really stretch boots out. So that's why I try to be honest with you guys in these reviews. Like, I wanna wear these for a month and really give you a good, good view, but I also wanna like really get as many boots in as I can. So it's kind of a weird gray area I'm stuck in. 
and sometimes I feel I get a good, a good grasp and sometimes I don't, but I'm hoping with these I do. And I don't really have much to say because I'm gonna break down everything again. You know, everything's the same on this boot besides there being no laces. And I'll probably even try to wear them together at some point, laced and not laced, just to kind of actually see what's going on and if it really matters and, and how the sizing is compared to the two and if there's any tweaks there. So that's pretty much all I have for this portion of the review, the unboxing. You know, this pearlized colorway is sick. I'm wearing them on grass, so I know they'll get dirty because they're all white, but hopefully they won't get as disgusting as these because I wore these solely on turf. Um, and maybe I'll wear these on both. It just it just depends on how I'm feeling, what the day is like, what day it is, where I can go train and etc. So hyped about these. I will definitely do a full review on them and really keep everybody in the loop. So it's been just a couple of days since I did the unboxing. I only wore these boots about three times. And if you can see, I don't know how well you see the light here, but they're pretty disgusting now. They're no longer that nice pearlized white color. And I also have a new camera now and I'm messing around with the settings and the mic settings. I'm not really good with cameras, so it's going to be a process figuring this out. So apologies if this video is a little weird or it sounds a little weird, but you know, I'm, I'm learning as I go. So we're going to jump into the review of this boot. It actually surprised me a lot. I was not expecting this and we're going to start with the sole plate, work our way up through the boot, talk about durability, talk about a couple other things, and then we'll just round off the review. So with that, we're going to get started with the sole plate. So I've talked about this sole plate a lot already. I've worn, I don't know, five or six pairs that have had this sole plate in. It is the Speed Frame sole plate. It was on the Speed Portal, a couple of remakes, and now on the Crazy Fast. So I feel like I've worn this enough, at least this sole plate, to get a good idea. It no longer has the Carbitex. They removed that halfway through the Speed Portal, but I really find that it doesn't make a difference. It's fairly neutral. The studs aren't quite round and conical, but they're also not quite aggressive and bladed. So they're really nice and even in the middle. And I think it's a solid sole plate. If you want to wear them on turf, you'll be fine. If you want to wear them on grass, even better. So I think that it's a very good sole plate. And for those of you who care about snapback, you know, it doesn't have carbon fiber, but look at that. Returns right away. Pretty snappy. Does that really affect your play? Does it really make you any faster or springier? I don't really think so. Did the carbon text really do much? I don't think so either. I'm not a scientist, but just going off of experience, it just didn't make that big of a deal. But overall, very, very nice sole plate. So if you want a boot that you can wear on turf or grass, definitely go with a you know speed frame sole plate boot. So the crazy fast, the speed portal, any of the remakes like that that they did. And now we're gonna move on to the upper. So the upper of this boot, I believe is called the Aeropacity Plus Speed skin maybe I should have written it down and I'm sorry I did not there's just so many different kinds of technologies out there lately so I just have not been super good with that now I did say before in the beginning of the video you won't be able to see on this boot because it's all white but they do have a little like strip of reinforced material on the edge of the boot so it runs from like basically all the way around the point of the toe there and that just kind of helps it stay together now did it really help affect the durability potentially I see maybe the slightest signs of ripping but I think for the most part that it's doing its job I felt pretty well connected with the boot and normally when I've been wearing these X models especially the speed portal and the lace version of the crazy fast I just felt very disconnected from the ball like I can't really play or do anything the ball gets stuck under my foot and obviously yeah it's probably the player it's not the boot but it's just something weird that happens to me when I wear them however not the case with the LL version and I don't know if it's because I didn't really play in any games it was all just training sessions I think I did like three three two-hour training sessions in these boots and I didn't have any real issues with that I felt everything was clean I felt the contact was great you know I really do like this knit upper and again it is the same exact boot like if I grab let me see if I grab the right one here um, if I grab the laced version from the shelf up there it does have laces so it might skew a little bit but it still is the same exact silhouette and I showed that in the unboxing but it's really I'm really just trying to say that it's the same boot and even though it's the same boot I just felt a lot more comfortable and better in these so well maybe not better but just it didn't have any issues there so I did like the upper I felt the contact was great on the ball I did a finishing a finishing session in these and I love them a lot so just something for you guys to kind of know and I don't know if there's any real difference it feels like if I, I don't know why I put this away if I pull it back out it feels like the exact same upper like it feels the same plastic consistency and just everything feels the same so I don't really know what I'm just gonna put that down because I'm gonna put that in there, but I don't really know what the what the difference is there for me, but you know, I definitely like these more and you know it just kind of rated them higher than the 0.1 lace version in my opinion. Moving on to lockdown. 
the lockdown with this boot was interesting. I didn't really have any major issues. I did some cutting and I'll throw the footage up here, but I did a lot of like cutting, chopping back and forth and just all the like movements I would do throughout the training sessions. I felt fairly comfortable in these. The biggest issue I had was I went to go hit a couple of balls in the air, like volleys or like when you kick the ball back up and volley it to like a partner that's like three yards away or whatever. Like if this is your foot and your foot's staying straight, like I found like I would go to like hit the ball and when I hit the ball, the boot would like rotate around my foot. Almost. Not like a crazy amount, but like within like a quarter to half an inch, I felt the whole boot shift. So that was kind of weird. And it righted itself when I landed back down on the ground with that foot, but it was just a little strange. And you know, the lockdown isn't awful. It's not something I say you're gonna really notice that much, but it's definitely a little bit of like moving around. And I was wearing grip socks. Now, if I compare it to the laced version, the laced version definitely had better lockdown than this boot, but that's kind of something I have experienced in the past is like, if you are getting a laced boot, in my opinion, you're maybe getting a little bit more comfortability or at least a better feel for the ball. And when you do that, you kind of trade in the lockdown, if that makes sense. But that's my opinion. And maybe you guys have never had that issue or feel that way, or maybe different laceless boots feel different. But I really enjoyed the laces version of the Crazy Fast and the Copa Pure. I have the Copa Pure Plus up there too. And I really actually enjoyed that a lot. So I don't know if it's just a personal thing, but it's just kind of what I've experienced and kind of something I figured I should share with you guys. So lockdown, not great, not bad. It's kind of just you know, you're wearing a boot, it doesn't have laces, you might slip around a little bit. Just kind of what comes with the territory. Now we're gonna talk about fit and comfort. So the fit for this boot, I went with a nine US and I talked about how I wasn't sure if a nine was gonna be the right size. I float between eight and a half and nine in some boots. So I don't always get it right when I go with a nine, but I've always been on the opinion that if you wear nine in a laced boot and you get the laceless version, a lot of people say go down half a size. I say keep the same size. I've never had a good experience going down half a size in laceless boots. And I know that this might be an exception because the, the lace version and the laceless version are the exact same thing, literally the exact same thing. Usually there's little bits of tweaks and differences in the past with X's, but no, these are the exact same. And um, I still felt the nine fit pretty well. There was a couple like like areas in here on the toe and I'll kind of show you one that I noticed. But like you, like I pressed down on the toe to check the size and then kind of kept a little indent, which was a little weird, but it didn't really affect my play or anything with the boot. And although there was a tiny little bit of room, I didn't notice it all when playing. I didn't ever feel like my toe dragged or, or any sort of, you know, catching or anything. And you know, the nine was fine. So I would say if you wear like a nine in a Predator, a nine in a Copa, get the nine in the, the Crazy Fast Point One LL. And if you wear a nine in the, the Crazy Fast Point One laced, <laughs> um, you can get the same size. So in terms of comfort, I felt like the heel was pretty comfortable. I liked, and I've talked about it before, they've kind of switched to where there's um, extra padding in the back there. It doesn't just meet up. And I didn't really like when the, the, the padding would just meet up. Now it kind of like curls a little bit, if that makes sense. There's like a little bit of extra material. It's kind of hard to explain, but the heel was comfortable. It didn't have any issues there. Lockdown on the heel was fine. That's not where I had any of the lockdown issues. And in terms of comfortability, you know, I felt for wide feet, I didn't get pain in the midfoot. So that was kind of nice. So if you have wide feet, I think you'll be okay with these. Honestly, like with my, how wide my feet are, the problem wasn't there. The problem I did had was in the arch area here. So that's a little bias for me though. And a little bit of backstory, I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis now for the last couple months and I had it pretty bad a few years ago, got rid of it and it's back. And I think it's back because I've been playing so much and I've just been doing so many boot reviews, just kind of cramming your foot in different boot shapes and new insoles all the time. It's just not really good for you. So it turns out it's not good for you. I'm experiencing that. So most of my pain was on the arch here. It would last half of the two hour session, maybe less. So maybe 30, 45 minutes of the two hour sessions. I just be in a bit of discomfort and pain. And then I would kind of just ignore it. I would not think about it. And when I remembered, Hey, you were having pains, no more issues. They'd be, they break in kind of, but it would happen every time I wore them. So I don't know if it's my feet getting used to them or the boot stretching out a bit, what the deal is there. You know, I only wore these for about six, seven hours total. So it's kind of hard to gauge exactly how much um, time I, is needed to break these in, but I feel like they're semi broken in. And again, you know, the color's not the greatest playing with them on grass. You can just kind of see it's like a dirty yellowish, whitish now. It's kind of like an off-white almost, an eggshell, like a nasty eggshell. But that kind of is something you have to deal with when you wear white boots. You're going to get them dirty anyway. So it's not as dirty as usually they get with the, you know, the turf. Like if I pull these up here, these are, I would argue, more disgusting. But that's besides the point. So overall, comfortability and size, you know, get your normal size that you get in Adidas boots. And comfortability, it's all right. Maybe it's just my feet. Maybe it's not. Maybe you'll have arch issues. But overall, it wasn't bad either. So... Nothing, nothing crazy, but nothing, nothing like, you know, no, gross. 
So durability is something that I am not really the best person to ask when it comes to boots because I don't wear them that long. I try to wear them for about a week, maybe four or five sessions in games and pickups and practices and it's just not long enough to see how well a boot's gonna hold up. And I'm also someone who just cleans through boots. I just rip them to pieces every time. So um, the only thing I can really say is, I don't know how well you can see, this is like the tip of the boot here. If it'll focus, focus, focus. Yeah, so there's like little like brown line and dirt. And I just don't, I don't know if that's, if that's how it happens because usually boots peel away just the slightest bit, but still stay attached very well, if you guys kind of understand what I'm trying to say. But, you know, the 0.1 laced version, I probably wore about 10-ish hours on turf, maybe even eight or six, it's, I can't really remember, but they held up very well on turf. And these were worn on grass, which grass typically doesn't beat boots up as much. Now, all these new boots that have been coming out, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Puma, they just don't hold together like the older boots do. So I wouldn't say that the durability is gonna be great with these, but again, I can't really answer because I'm not one who wears boots long enough and it, it's, it kind of stinks that I can't give you guys that answer but I just really try to get as many reviews out while also trying to wear the boots as long as possible so it's kind of a weird balance and it's maybe not the best but it's kind of just what I'm dealing with and I like to be transparent and let you guys know like I'm not sure how well the durability is but for the six hours I put into at least this pair it held up fine just you know it's a little dirty and a little, a little gross looking <laughs> but that's gonna happen so. so the final rating for this boot is a 8.0 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10 80 percent a B minus not something that's really crazy so you know it's not a bad boot it actually really surprised me you know not having laces i thought it would be a little worse but it actually really grew on me and i liked them a lot more the first 30 minutes of the first session actually i was not having it with these i was telling my friend and a couple other guys i was training with i hate these i don't like these These boots suck but you know it, it grew on me i don't know why i don't know how but i started to really like them i liked the, the touch of the upper i felt very connected to the ball uh, you know, the only downside is kind of the lockdown and the pain issues I would get, but it's kind of hard to say if that's the boot or if it's me. So just kind of being transparent there and letting you guys know that's that's just where I'm at with that. But overall, really solid boot. And I think if you're looking for a laceless speed boot that this is going to be where you want to go. I mean, I think it's the only new laceless speed boot on the market besides maybe the Tequila, but that's besides the point. So definitely a boot like if you like the speed flow and the speed portal plus i think you're gonna like the new laceless version i think that this boot is actually better than the speed portal i don't know if it beats out the, the speed flow i don't think any boot will for the for a long time i think the speed flow is not even modern at 50 but overall i think that this is a very nice boot and you know eight out of ten rating not much more that this boot can really do. So that's my entire review on the Crazy Fast Point One LL. If you guys liked this review and you wanna see more like it, I've got a bunch up on my channel now. I try to get out two to three reviews a week, so about two to three videos, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, when I'm really up and posting and on top of things. So with that, just check out the channel and thank you guys again for watching.